Toei's Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger TV series wrapped up its tremendously successful television broadcast on March 26 of 1977. Driven by a strong desire to continue capitalizing on the series while preventing media fatigue and declines in merchandise sales, Toei refreshed the concept and immediately started production on a follow-up TV series in partnership with Shotaro Ishinomori. On April 9, 1977, two weeks after Go Ranger ended its TV run, Jakka Denki Kitai premiered on TV Asahi. Its first episode was well received, and rating-wise was on par with Go Ranger's performance over that show's last few weeks on the air. Jack Ka's story centers on the Interpol-affiliated organization, the International Science Special Investigation Squad, ISIS for short. Their mission? To fight the international criminal syndicate known simply as CRIME. Led by Daisuke Kujirai, codenamed Joker, a brilliant scientist in the field of cyborg technology, ISIS assembles a special four-member cyborg unit to counter crimes mechanical monsters. Jakka Dengekitai. Jakka Dengekitai is made up of four young individuals who volunteer to go through Joker's cyborg enhancement procedure. Sakurai Goro, a Japanese athlete with Olympic aspirations, who takes on the role of atomic powered spade ace. Higashi Ryo, a boxing prodigy who fell on hard times while working as a hustler in Las Vegas and is now the electric-powered Daya Jack. Misuki Karen, a former detective with the Japanese police who is now the magnetic-powered Heart Queen, and its fourth member, Daichi Bunta, a marine scientist who aspired to build an underwater city before dying in a submarine accident he becomes the gravity power Clover King. Thanks to their cyber enhancements, each member of Jakka has incredible powers and abilities that allow them to fight evenly against crime's mechanical monsters. This includes enhanced strength and senses, the ability to unleash their unique power sources in the form of offensive technique and special weapons, and when all else fails, they can also combine their powers into one unstoppable attack, Jakka Kobak. In episode 23, these four core members would be joined by Bamba Sokichi, who becomes their new field commander and aids them on the ground as the ultimate cyborg, Big One. In addition to being able to harness the power sources of each of Jakka's cyborgs, Bamba is also a master of disguise and frequently uses this skill to help the team uncover crime's plots. Jakka is also aided in their mission by a fleet of specialized vehicles that help the team take on crime on land, sea, and air. These include the Flying Fortress Sky Ace, the Heavy Assault Vehicle Jack Tank, and the Jakka Machines, four small land-based vehicles that the Jaka team use for ground-based pursuits and combat. These powers and their fleet of vehicles are all going to be necessary to help Jaka Denkekitai fend off crime's schemes to rule the world through their criminal syndicate. Led by boss Iron Claw, crime is a worldwide organization dedicated to taking power and wealth from the world's countries and elite members of society. To accomplish this, Iron Claw assembles an army of assassins, crime bosses, and robots to enforce their plans. As the series progresses, it would be revealed that crime was, in fact, a cover-up operation set up by Shine, a 
highly advanced artificial intelligence from the planet Shine in the second galaxy system. Tasked with the unenviable mission of building on Go Ranger's success, the production team behind Jacka made a decision to go back to the more serious tone of Go Ranger's early episodes to create contrast against the previous work. Series writer Shoso Uehara expressed that this tone was partially informed by the backstories associated to each of the main characters and the darkness that led to each becoming a cyborg. This is even reflected in the opening song, which references the sadness that lies inside the Jackka's coal mechanical bodies. As such, the first 12 episodes in the series feature more realistic and grounded stories that focus on mafia-style plots led by local crime bosses and minimize the more sci-fi-oriented elements of the story. This results in crime's robots being mostly kept in the background of each episode until it's time for Jacka to defeat the crime boss. In keeping with the more realistic atmosphere, the robots also lack the personalities and quirks that made Go Rangers mask monsters so memorable. Even their designs were subdued, with most of the robots in the first half of the series bearing a metallic gray color tone that made them visually uninteresting. This tone also impacted the way in which the title characters are presented. While Go Ranger leaned heavily towards an over-the-top theatrical heavy presentation of its heroes, Jacka is less interested in creating a larger-than-life spectacle around its cyber protagonist. As such, the battles in the first 12 episodes of the series follow a very specific flow that it doesn't deviate much from and keeps the characters from having memorable and explosive moments like Go Ranger. While the show initially rode the coattails of Go Ranger's popularity into strong ratings, the new approach and serious presentation led to a steady drop in the ratings and merchandise sales. This led to a retooling of the series' format, style, storylines, and characters that started to kick in around episode 9 and would continue until the end of the series. For example, in episode 9, the Jacka team starts using heroic introduction lines to announce their entrance to the battlefield. Spade Ace would start attacking crime while uttering the flashing jump of the Red Wind, the roaring dance of my nuclear whip. This is more in line with the approach of Go Ranger and other Tokutato heroes of justice of this era would take in other toy productions. Episode 10 introduces the use of humor in the final confrontation against the crime boss. This will be expanded on as the series progress. In episode 11, the crime robot is given a more prominent role and a personality, which makes it feel more like a masked monster from Go Ranger. This trend would continue until episode 20, when the story moves completely away from the crime bosses. But the biggest changes to the series were introducing episode 23, White Birdman, Big One. First, we introduced to a new crime leader named Shine, who comes from extraterrestrial origins. Second, the Jack Ka team get a new leader in the form of Big One, whose personality, on the field leadership, and fighting prowess allowed the Jacka team to counter crime's new Kobak resistant invader robots. Despite these changes and Miyaushi Hiroshi's incredible on screen presence, Jacka's ratings never fully recovered and the series ended with episode 35, making it the shortest entry in the Super Sentai series. As a standalone work, though, Jacka stands the test of time with stories that still have relevance in the modern era, from the violent impact and chaos that high-powered weapons can inject into society to the kidnapping of high-worth individuals. Jacka dealt with some dark themes when it comes to organized crimes. While subdued, the series also introduced one of the earliest romance storylines in the Super Sentai series 
with Sakurai and Mizuki developing feelings for each other throughout the series, culminating with their mission in episodes 34 and 35. The heroic action scenes are also a delight to watch, performed by members of the Japan Action Club. Jaka's action scenes rely heavily on aerial movements, high jumps, and trampoline power stunts. As the show progresses, the cinematography and staging of the fights become even more diverse and bigger in scale, lending the show a progressively better quality to its end-of-episode sequences. While the series had an earlier-than-planned-for end to its run, like Go Ranger, Jacka made a lasting impact on the Super Sentai series and its characters would go on to appear in other works. These included the 1978 epilogue movie Jacka Dengekitai vs. Go Ranger, which we previously looked at in episode 7 of our YouTube series. You can use the link in the description below to check it out. Big One would return to become a mentor to the Gao Ranger and lead the legendary Super Sentai team members in the 2001 V Cinema movie Gao Ranger vs. Super Sentai. Jekka would resurface again during the first episode of Gokaiger and the Gokaiger Gosager Super Sentai 199 Hero Great Battle movie where alongside the first 34 Super Sentai teams, they fought against the Space Empire Sangyak. Crime's henchmen, the Crimers, would also reappear as part of the combined combatant monster in Kaisoku Sentai Gokaiger the movie, The Flying Ghost Ship. The Crimer can be briefly spotted on the back left leg of the monster. Spades return as one of the powers that Captain Marblos uses during the 2012 film Kamen Rider Super Sentai Superhero Tyson, where he fights the similarly themed Kamen Rider Blade. Most recently, Spade Ace appeared in Kikai Sentai Zenkai during the movie Red Battle All Sentai Rally, and Big One appeared in Kikai Sentai Zenkai. Zenkai Red Showcase 2, where alongside Kaku Ranger's Ninja White, Tsuruhime, he helps Kaito understand that you don't have to be a red hero in order to be a leader. And, like Go Ranger, Jaka managed to make its way to other TV markets, the most well-known instance being its Lucky Aces adaption for the Philippines television market in 1978. It also saw limited broadcasts in the Los Angeles market during the late 1970s. While Jack Ka has never reached the popularity or pop cultural relevance of Go Ranger, it's still a well done and fun to watch Tokutato Hero series that helped bridge the gap between the classic Henshin period and the modern era of Tokutato Heroes. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend taking the time to experience its cyborg hero action.